Hi, it's Elizabeth. I want to go back to the subject of reinforcement and punishment. As I said before, reinforcement is something that causes a behavior to be maintained. In other words, to happen again. Punishment is something that causes a behavior to end. And that is the key word there. If it's not causing a behavior to end, it is not punishment. Even if you mean for it to be punishment, it is not punishment. So, um, you know, for example, if you're saying, you know, you can't go to lunch if you don't finish your work and this keeps happening, well, that's not a punishment if it keeps happening. That shows you that maybe the kid really wants to spend that extra time with you and not go to lunch. So I've had students that um, have to finish their work before going to lunch and students who don't because I know that um, some students are motivated by it and so they get to go when it's done and I'll use anything I can in the schedule to motivate them and other students would love nothing more than to be in the classroom with me during their lunch time. So it's really an individual thing, what is punishment and what is reward. But I do want to say something about punishment and that it is, it is very risky to rely on any kind of punishment because punishment is by nature very demoralizing and demotivating. And it can cause behaviors to escalate. When somebody loses something to the point where they don't have anything to lose, that's when you're going to get the worst behaviors possible. Um, applying punishment can also lead you into a power struggle, which you want to avoid more than anything. Um, if you're in a power struggle with a child, you've already lost because you're in a power struggle. So, um, so some ways to, I'm not saying that you can't have consequences to bad behaviors, but some ways to have a consequence but avoid punishment is to have natural consequences. Um, as I said, I try to work the schedule so that there are, there is built in motivation for some kids. So that whatever consequences happen, happen. And I try to take myself out of the picture of that. I was just like, mm, this is how it is. I'm trying to help you get there. I'm trying to help you get done. But this is the schedule. And so if they choose to waste a lot of their time, the natural consequence is that they are running out of time for other things. And I don't have to apply any kind of punishment um, by taking away something or, or, or adding some kind of punishment to something. Um, so like I said, punishment is very risky. You could have, have a meltdown. You could have the behavior gradually increase and escalate. So um, I'm not saying that there's no place for it. Um, sometimes if you've tried everything and this is what works, then punishment um, needs, needs, needs to happen. Um, Another thing when you open that door of punishment is then you look at, you know, the ethics of what kind of punishment you can do. Um, so it's very, very tricky and, and um, really when you're writing a behavior plan, you have to have a very good justification for why you are applying anything in the form of a punishment. Um, for another example of, of punishment is something that sometimes we don't intend to punish. For example, if you have a child who is um, elective mute, for example, and one day that child just forgets that they don't speak at school or wherever the environment is and says, wow, and you go, oh, you spoke, oh my gosh, great job, and that child never speaks again, that was punishment to that child, to pay attention to that. So again, punishment is anything that ends a behavior or decreases a behavior, I should say. So um, if a child raises their hands and they get something wrong and you say, nope, wrong, next, and they never raise their hand again, that was a punishment to them. A lot to think about, but um, 
when you get get a hold of some of these some of the vocabulary of behavior analysis it makes you also think about what you do.